Hallelujah. Come on, prophet. Come on, prophetess. Hallelujah. So, so now listen, there's a prophet of God coming to speak to us. Please welcome him. A prophet of God is coming with a message to talk to us now. Welcome, brother prophet. Vijay, please come and give the message of God. Come on, let's welcome him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is so awesome that we learned so many things, so many things today. Especially this retreat. Personally, it was so much uh, encouraging for me, building me again, re-establishing me again in God's word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Theoretically, I came with one intention that brother also should know. Theoretically, I am very perfect. Theoretically, I am very perfect. That means, uh, in this 10-15 years of ministry, we have preached on a lot of topics and uh, learned so much from the Bible, learned so much from different books, learned so much from the YouTube. But, practically, nothing was happening in our life. Amen. When a preacher, it says, when a, when a man of God preaches, signs should follow. And that signs were not happening. And we were rotating in that retreat centers last 15 years. All that we have to go do is go give the message and come back. And I came with one intention. Lord, if I have to do the ministry, to go back, if I have to do the ministry, your signs should follow. Amen. The moment brother told me in month of May that there is a retreat like this, I immediately told him, brother, I will be there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Gift of tongues, I want to tell a small testimony and then go forward. We run a small Bible course, about 60, 70 come, and we run that course. And we were very much blessed to have brother in the month of uh, April. He came for a small session in the evening for one hour. I have seen a first time, I have seen a preacher who is telling two things. That I will come on, come on my own. Only give me this poor children. I saw the love and compassion that he had for the children uh, who were from uh, remote villages. And he was preaching only on gift of tongues. And it was almost 11 o'clock. Just beside a school building, there is also a provincial house. So, after 10 o'clock, I don't dare to do anything because, you know, fathers are you know, very disciplined. Uh, time to time, they go to sleep. So, preaching was over. It was around 11 o'clock. Now, brother says, we'll go for a practical session. Now, there were about 70 people. And brother says, we'll go for a practical session. Imagine all 70 people praising God in that time at 11 o'clock and we are in a residential area and I was afraid. I told brother, I can't do this. Then slowly God, with God's wisdom, we shifted all of the students to another room, another classroom where nobody is disturbed. We closed down all the rooms and windows, everything, it was totally tight, including all the team. We had no mic in that room. Brother just now said, now start praising God. All started praising God in a, in maybe, maybe, yeah, nobody touched, we, we never touched anybody. We just started praying with them. Five to ten minutes passed. All the students, all the students who came to that batch received gift of tongues. Amen. Hallelujah. Then what happened, brother? One hour. It went on for more than one hour. And again I was afraid. It is midnight at 12 o'clock. If somebody comes up, some neighbor comes up and uh, you know, complains about the noise and all. And we were trying to control them. Neither I was able to control them, nor brother was able to control them. Then he said, brother, go and bring the speaker. 
then we 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 asked the volunteers to get the, get the speaker then we got the mic and when we it took another 15 20 minutes or half an hour to control them and for the glory of god all of them are blessed and because they were blessed in may we had one more batch we had 90 children hallelujah and again brother cancelled a program in mumbai and he said i will come for this children and i have never seen a god servant who have been telling that and he came all the way cancel the programs maybe cancel the program in goa and mumbai both places he came directly there and two days he spent with the children and they were really they were really touched so many were healed many were anointed and they really went back blessed why i am telling this is that was a brother came for the 39th and the 40th batch for what we were running so 38 batches what we were doing we were training them in the biblically topic wise by god's grace some experienced healing some experienced deliverance in the course of time that normally happens when we preach god's word because there is power in god's word but we didn't we didn't see to it that everybody experienced god's word god's uh, uh, presence hallelujah i am here in this retreat to be a blessing to so many people and uh, i am very much blessed last 4 days 4 5 days and god was constantly talking to me where i was going wrong in my ministry hallelujah 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 and uh, thank god brother and uh, i am and uh, uh, for the heart that you have and for the organizing this and we are really spiritually uh, enlightened and reestablished in christ amen <laughs> hallelujah so we'll go to uh, i will i will not go in detail as brother is preaching but uh, we will go in an overview about fasting so in the bible there are there are people who fasted for 40 days there are people who fasted for 21 days there are people who fasted for 7 days there are people who fasted for 3 days so different types of people 40 days fasting 21 days fasting 3 days fasting and 7 days fasting and all were effective all were effective all were effective and what i see when it comes to fasting when it comes to fasting we reestablish a relationship with god one side on the second side when we are in the real fasting when our motive is proper god takes an opportunity to change our character to change our character hallelujah so how do we understand this we all know that moses was was called by god he grew up in egypt he had all the talents he had all the good education he is he is at the age of 40 now he wants to serve now god wants to use him god wants to god wanted god called him so that he may deliver all the israel people from that bondage now if at all god has to use moses he has to deal with his character now he has to deal with this character 40 days in the palace now he is 40 days is in the wilderness sorry sorry 40 years in the palace now 40 years is in the wilderness this 40 years you know why god wanted to deal with the character in the normal course every one of us living in the world will have anger that's common but this man had an anger so much anger he killed a person he killed a person so so much of anger he had so god had god has to deal with his character and immediately the second the first time god calls him to mount sinai and god with his own hands writes down the 10 commandments and gives to gives gives to the hands of moses he comes down and he sees israel people worshiping an idol he gets an angry he is again we know that he is a person with anger he comes 
throws down the tablets of stones which god has written with his own hands is anger gone even after being called by god is anger gone no and god calls in the second time come up again come up again we go to exodus chapter 34 verse 27 somebody can uh, uh, look into the bible uh, 34 verse 27 now we are talking see many people preach on this topic that moses for the 40 days and 40 nights he neither ate anything nor drank anything go to 34 verse 27 yeah and the lord said to moses write down these words after tenor of these words i i have made a covenant with thee and with israel go to the next verse brother and he and he was there with the lord 40 days and 40 nights neither ate bread nor drank water he wrote on the tablets the words of the covenant of the 10 commandments so 40 days and 40 nights thank anything and he was in the presence of god and only two people we see in the bible 40 days the prophets one is moses then another is jesus christ third one is the prophet i said prophet elisha he was also elisha was also uh, fasted for 40 days he didn't have food for 40 days so the point here is if a person is not having anything for 40 days and 40 nights he is not eating nor drinking we know how down we are today we didn't have two times breakfast and lunch we are physically down yes yes or no for 40 days he didn't have anything how he should be by the time by the time he comes from the mount sinai how he should be either he should be dead or there should be an ambulance ready under the mount sinai hallelujah but pardon he will be able to, uh, he would he will not be able to come down but as i said fasting empowers you fasting empowers you with god's anointing and what did moses eat morning we we started with a verse said real fasting is to eat the real food so moses all these 40 days and 40 nights he was eating every word that came from the mouth of god in the process my dear brothers when we are in the fellowship of god with fasting there will be an impact there will be a change in our character all these 40 days when he was having good fellowship with god the character was exchanging all the god's nature all the divine nature of god was coming into him so there is a saying normally in in uh, in a normally outside outside world they are saying if you uh, if you have good friendship with a drunkard for 6 months what will happen there is every possibility every possibility that you become a drunkard suppose you are moving with a drug addict for 6 months what will happen there is every possibility that you also get into drugs so your your fellowship with the person is very important in the same manner our fellowship with our god gives us his character to us we gain his love we gain his compassion we gain his mercy all the divine nature of god comes into us when we fast and have fellowship with god and god cannot use any person without that that transformation in that character hallelujah brother was talking about patience and patience will not come just like that patience will come through suffering suffering produces endurance and endurance builds character we go to romans 5 verse 3 romans chapter 5 verse 3 romans chapter 5 verse 3 we glory in tribulations also tribulation worketh patience next verse yeah 
yeah my rsv translation says patience brings character and character brings hope and hope does not hope does not disappoint us and whoever has hope will get into faith and faith will bring you a miracle everybody has to go through this process first tribulation that will bring you patience patience will form your character character will bring you hope hope will bring you faith and faith will bring you the miracle amen hallelujah 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 in the same manner if you see our uh, sen paul he was he was a notorious man he was a notorious man he hated christians the moment he sees christians the moment he sees christian houses he dragged the christians out and and he was killing them he was a witness when when stephen was was stoned to death and i i sometimes wonder god all the time chooses people who are of this kind amen hallelujah hallelujah notorious where the world has rejected them where calls where the world calls them weak we go to uh, we go to whom god calls we'll see that uh, uh, 1 corinthians chapter 1 was 27 but god has chosen the foolish things of the world to comfort the wise and god has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty next verse brother and god chooses what is despised in the world what is rejected in the world this man was maybe this man was very much zealous for his jewish uh, uh, judaism he was very much jealous for his religion he wanted to promote his tradition that's the reason he was killing christians and now god has to deal with this character amen hallelujah hallelujah so paul did not go to any seminary paul did not go to any person in anybody paul went goes to arabia for 3 and 1/2 years where does he go he goes to arabia for 3 and 1/2 years and in arabia you don't have a seminary or a bible college you don't have apostles like peter and all he has fellowship with his master who called him to the service three and a half years he was in fellowship with the master after having that wonderful fellowship not only his character is was changed not only and paul was the person who suffered most in the bible not only his character was changed he is very confident of what he what he preaches he says anybody who preaches the gospel other than the gospel that i preach don't believe you should have guts to say that we go to galatians we go to galatians first galatians galatians chapter 1 verse 12 by the revelation of gc everything paul got it through the revelation of jesus christ and this revelation he got it and his character was changed when he had fellowship with jesus christ amen hallelujah hallelujah so all of us all of us have 24 hours time in a day all of us has 24 hours time in a day or only in certain areas you have 24 hours now just tell me as a believer maybe as a god servant how many hours of time we spend in the presence of god we want to change and god also wants to change us god is more god is more interested to change our lives but he can change only when you can come into his presence when you have no time uh, brother gave a very good example a man after getting a job he said i have no time for god and the man of god prayed lord he has no time so uh, create time so that he can come to the church and he loses his job amen hallelujah 
but but all this god but paul if you see he didn't wish to he would have gone actually with the past experience he would have gone to the apostles who are living in jerusalem who had mighty experiences who who, are, who all these apostles were with jesus for three and a half years they might have learned so much they might have seen so much jesus doing they have also seen jesus being resurrected they have seen everything paul would have gone to those people but he goes to arabia and in arabia god changes his character not only that he says i have not received this gospel from any man for i have received this gospel by the revelation of jesus christ himself and why i am telling this i had theoretical knowledge from the bible i lacked revelation from the word i lacked revelation from the word and paul says in one 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 galatians chapter 1 verse 7 galatians chapter 1 verse 7 somebody can read 1 verse 7 yeah ah ha ah but even if we are an angel from heaven would proclaim to you a gospel contrary to what we proclaim to you let that one be accursed he is confident because he has received the gospel from god the second thing that i learnt in this retreat is we were also preaching but sometimes in the flesh sometimes in the spirit in the flesh we were preaching and sowing the corruptible seed which was not bearing fruit the seeds that we sowed to the incorruptible seed through the spirit they were bearing fruit here and there and i understood in this retreat what it means to preach in the flesh what it means to preach in the spirit amen hallelujah thank you brother for the enlightenment i am i am telling actually my surgery what happened so that it helps everybody there are people who who tell long sermons the people who tell long sermons but nothing get nothing gets into our head nothing gets gets into our head there are people who speak for 10 15 minutes that's it that's it the difference is the people who preach in flesh the people who preach in spirit hours of messages will not bring transformation but a few a few minutes or few hours of preaching will change the lives of the people when brother came to hyderabad it was a god's privilege uh that i could translate for him and when he came actually i almost decided not to translate the reason being uh, i used to go to uh, we have a retreat center so every sunday i go for translation uh, and uh, our sister goes for on the third sunday for translation for father so after the mass it, that that is actually live uh, throughout the world it goes through catholichub.tv and uh, that is also edited and uh, telecasted in the tv and uh, about 5 to 6000 people will be sitting that's a great opportunity actually but when god when i when i actually prayed god said uh, i have not called you for that i have not called you for that and everybody who is who was meeting me after that they were actually recognizing me as a translator brother you did very good translation so because of that i i went and told father i don't want to be recognized as a translator father i'm sorry i'm a preacher i'm a small preacher but whatever small i am i want to be recognized as a preacher then i dropped out of that that time brother came first again i had a desire i had a desire when i was uh, when when uh, brother came to lucy reddy's hall and she was uh, she was tired then then she gave the mic by translating i could experience 
when when i came to you brother i was in a total shattered position wanted to close down the ministry didn't have a zeal to work for god i thought enough is enough now i will relax that was a situation of mine of course many of many of many of uh, i mean uh, many of the people around me also do not know because they were seeing me as a preacher only so they were working together but actually i was in the mindset of closing down everything i said to myself enough is enough no no support from anybody nobody encourages you nobody appreciates you nobody backs you up so how long to struggle and apart from that everybody humiliates you now if it is a white cloth if there is there is dark dark spot somewhere people try to see the dark spot so somewhere we were wrong here and there they were only seeing that mistakes in us and trying to point out and and uh, disappoint us or discourage us that situation i thought why should i do i am a government officer earning 70000 rupees my wife also works i have a own house and entire my family is not renewed other side family they say why are you working like this why can't you relax why can't you come come to parties you last 15 years you don't come anywhere so i almost decided why should i struggle like this and when brother came i could experience that power again and my spirit revived and uh, i had a zeal so i had a zeal again slowly slowly i was developing a desire yes will work will work and uh, the person was not interested in translation normally i don't ask anybody for preaching i will come there i will come there but i was pressing on 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 a lucidity garu that i will come for translation and twice when february march i think you came and uh, april you came and uh, may you came and uh, this retreat this retreat has totally brought a different outlook outlook of the ministry amen because people with me from hyderabad they have, they might have seen they have like saujanya and all they are seeing me from last 15 years they see a zeal in me but uh, but that was not uh, taking a uh, bearing fruit bearing fruit if i look back i have done so much went to so many places done so much trained so many people done so much but didn't have the satisfaction was was trying to withdraw from the ministry amen hallelujah 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 was getting offended for every small thing brother also observed that and and uh, i told uh, you know um, you people aff- get offended very soon i said brother yes we get offended soon because we don't have love in us we lack love in our lives because we lack love neither we could give love and we were actually going far from the people who didn't want us or who didn't like us or you know, who rejected us amen hallelujah hallelujah so that's how that's how god want god here uh, why i'm telling about that character is this four five days in here fellowship with in god god has dealt with my character god has dealt with my character and i have an inner transformation actually brother asked me to preach but i am i am i am telling my testimony amen so that is more important my dear brothers and sisters uh what we preach everybody want to serve god it's yes it's a good thought to serve god before that a good formation should be there that is our character formation amen and looking at i i i today if i look back there were so many people so many people who wanted to be who wanted to be associated with me in the ministry but because i had some qualities i lost all of them if i had that character i was praying at one stage today lord you have introduced me to so many so many good servants good servants means good servants 
they were all good i am not blaming them for anything but uh, nobody laid a good foundation in me so that i can stand on my own legs and go forward all that we had is not that i didn't do retreats i did eight retreats in pota eight retreats anybody has done eight retreats in pota i don't think anybody has done eight retreats in pota i have done four retreats in tabur ashram i am close to every father matthew elevenkel father agustin father matthew nakam parambel and through our family we used to convert we used to conduct about till 2010 10 conventions every year or 10000 people used to come entire pota team pota team used to come the same uh, school brother the same school where we had we used to have the pota team there and we used to as a family my father in law used to organize so about 10000 people used to come entire diocese used to come there there were prophecies on me that you will be used like that like this but nothing was bearing fruit amen hallelujah hallelujah there was a time in my life there was a bible in the hand i was working with some god servants why i am telling is you might have also gone through this type of experiences so ignorant i was so ignorant i was in in my life i was holding the bible i was working with god servants but nobody told me to open the bible and read neither neither i i got a thought because being a catholic you know only two things sincerely attend mass in the morning sincerely tell the rosary in the evening and i was used to that but nobody told me to read the bible i'm not telling now maybe 10 15 years back even after coming to the charismatic renewal also i was so ignorant somebody tell suppose brother tells a word i used to open the bible underline that verse and close the bible and keep like this as israelites wandered in the desert for so many years to go up to the promised land there was more wandering in my life there was more wandering in my life hallelujah 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 yeah ministry wise god does because ministry wise god does so many things through you ministry wise god does so many things so many things to you because when god does ministry he doesn't look at a god servant he looks at the people before him a point in the bible moses comes god tells moses to hit the rock twice hit the rock once twice once he hits the rock twice but still god gives the water still god gives the water after his servant be, uh, being disobedient to him because he looks at the people who are thirsty he looks at the people who are thirsty of course god has his own way of dealing moses so whenever we minister unto people whenever we are in the ministry we should not be proud of ourselves that particular time god gives anointing and gives a message so that you can preach most of the time when we stand god looks at the people who are hungry god looks at the people who are thirsty am i right brother amen hallelujah and uh, i don't have any words to share i cannot share the message also now so i just want to share a few things and uh, so it's important my dear brothers to have the knowledge of the word we actually put down the bible we actually put down the bible there is a uh, a, a man called bhakt singh in andhra this man tore the bible this man tore the entire bible there was only bible cover so he saw the bible cover and on the bible cover it is written a holy book holy book he saw that word holy book and he got the book again he got the book again 
started reading the entire Bible. He's a Protestant man, but established over 10,000 churches. Amen. There's another man. He's called RRK Murthy. He's a Brahmin. This man wanted to find out faults in the Bible. So he was reading John's Gospel. He was reading John's Gospel. And finally he testifies saying, I wanted to get some mistakes from the Bible, but Bible has found mistakes in me. Amen. And he got transformed and so many people were, were led, to the, led, to the, led to God. So many books, many books give information. Bible is the only book which brings in transformation in us. And based on this Bible, lakhs of books were written. Lakhs of books were written. And I am telling you, in the Guinness Book of World Records, this is the largest selling book. Largest selling book. But the problem with us is we don't get into the word, we don't read the word, we don't acknowledge God's word. More word, more faith. More word, more faith. Amen? So that's all I have to speak and uh, we'll close our eyes and make a small prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you and I praise you. I glorify you, Lord, for this few moments of, of testifying about myself. Lord, thank you. You have brought us here. We are looking ahead of four, uh, next four or five days, oh Lord. Spirit of God, quench our thirst. Thank you for our dear brother, for having given a good heart. Lord, it is not only preaching. He has put a lot of sacrifice into this ministry. He sacrifices so many things in his life. Lord, bless him. We remember his family. We remember his wife, children. We remember his brother's family, sister's family. Lord, bless him in all that he does. Let your mighty hand be upon them. Let them not lack anything in the ministry, in the family, in every area of their, out of their life. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Thank you. God bless you. Praise God. Uh, honestly speaking, when I came to Hyderabad, I never knew that you were going through all this. And I think so. Uh, when I came, especially in the month of May, you were standing there. And I saw those children, they come from very poor family, very means extremely poor family and they're not even born Christians. And when I looked at them, I began to cry. I was crying and crying and crying, preaching and crying. And God was speaking to me about different people with what different sicknesses they had. And I would call them and say, you got this, come here. And the next moment they would get healed. And I never knew that my brother was standing there, God was doing this all for him. I never knew that brother, that you had a ministry where there were no signs and wonders, believe me. And, and, and you, you remember that, I was crying. And, and you know, God began to heal me, these children like lumps, uh, there is lump now and I would say, see now watch this, how Jesus loves you and the next moment the lumps w was gone. So those children, they saw with their eyes such miracles and they opened their heart. And now when you were sitting, when I was sitting there and you were saying that I wanted to close down and all those things, I said, God, I now understand the miracles were not for the children only, it was for you, my brother as well. <laughs> Hallelujah. And, 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 and I just sitting there said, God, let there be an impartation of this anointing in my brother, okay? That my brother's ministry from now on 
will accompany everywhere you go with signs and wonders in Jesus name Amen. Thank you Lord Hallelujah Believe me I never knew there is that's what I'm saying we never know who is going through what and I'll tell you in the month of May was one of the most amazing a ministry of two days with these children and the best part is the people the children in the village when you tell them close your eyes and repeat the scripture you give them one instruction and tell them keep repeating the scripture i called the others who are with me and said come and see them they just listen to the instruction for 10 15 20 minutes they were repeating the scripture not one of them opened their eyes to see what's happening they were all lost it was so beautiful to speak and preach to the remote villages then it's very difficult to preach in the city and the results that come through them is mind blowing praise god and and i was telling brother whenever you have any retreats for these children please give me a information i will cancel somewhere but i will be with these children because i don't because i want to tell you these children when they get touched i'm 100% sure they will go and knocking at every door and say hey i've met the lord but we children in the city not necessary because we got all the reasoning we got all those things but not the people in the village is it true you all keep going to the villages is it true when you get one person in the village that person will go like a wildfire going everywhere hallelujah we people in the city are more selfish like i'm now very selfish not giving any break for dinner <laughs> hallelujah thank you brother god bless you so the meeting continues okay 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 we 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 take a break we take a break what's the time 8 o'clock 8:30 praise god none of us seem to be hungry okay father we thank you for the great day we had today and we continue to have and thank you lord for the testimony of brother vijay how he realized that his heart was blocked with hurts and bitterness and discouragement even though lord he has preached to thousands and thousands so many people have changed their lives but yet in his own life there was emptiness teach us to love lord teach us to walk in love all the time lord as we are praying in tongues the river is flowing help us to renew our mind and make love and forgiveness the top priority of our life the very evidence that we love you is by our love that's what you said they shall know that you are my disciples not by preaching not by fasting not by praying not by singing nothing but only love so lord give us help us to grow in the love of our god in love we thank you and we praise you in jesus name amen, amen.